All right. From the Tips fans, we have a special guest joining us this week. Fellow Illinois State alum, David Perkins. You know, if you can see us on screen, I'm repping the birds this time. I uh, got to show support for, for the Redbirds. And I, I'm excited to have David on the show just because I'm a Redbird too. And it's awesome to see him uh, making strides in his professional career coming from ISU. So welcome to the show, David. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, we're happy to have you on. So like, I like to start all of these with just allowing you to kind of tell the listeners a little bit about how you got into the game of golf and, and, and why you love it and why you're still playing it. Yeah. Um, mine, uh, I, I, I grew a love for golf kind of through baseball actually. Uh, so growing up, I played a lot of baseball and, uh, occasionally would play golf with, with my dad, who was the person who introduced me to the game, uh, but really didn't like it or love it like I do now. Uh, but eventually just kind of kept playing it and playing it and, and began to fall in love with it and kind of fell out of love with baseball. So I gave up baseball in high school and kind of pursued golf. And, and since that day, it's uh, it's been what I've been doing. Yeah, I think uh, I I always, I started with baseball as well. I kind of baseball runs in my family. Um, but then, you know, once I stopped playing baseball, it was, it was all golf all the time. I didn't make it to your level, but <laughs> kind of the, the same little transition there yeah. that we, we both had. Um, and then growing up in, in the Peoria area, I've talked with some other guys that have, have grown up in the Midwest and kind of how I think it makes you a gritty golfer just because you have to play in a lot of different conditions. Um, how would you describe kind of growing up in the Midwest? How did that shape your golf game? And maybe what is, what is a course that, that you enjoyed most um, growing up and playing around your, your hometown? Yeah, you know, like you said, growing up in the Midwest, uh, you play golf whenever you can. Whatever level of golf you mm -hmm. are, if, if it's above, you know, above freezing, you're going to try and get outside. Uh, so I, I would definitely say that uh, growing up, in the Midwest has made me a, a more mentally, mentally stronger when it comes to golf, uh, you know, playing in 30 mile an hour winds when it's 40 degrees and just kind of doing it because you had no other choice. And also because at my level, I knew it'd make me better. Uh, so there's something to that for sure. Uh, and I think I learned that from high school and in college, you know, the state tournament in, in high school, at least when I played, they've been lucky the past few years, but it was, you mm -hmm. know, it was, 30 to 35 when you're teeing off and didn't get above 45 and in Bloomington it's blowing 20 to 30 at that time of the year so I mean it was just absolutely brutal and then I decided to go to college at Illinois State and so I've been there did that through <laughs> high school same yeah. conditions you know we were outside whenever we can uh but yeah I think all that all those experiences and the the gritty weather uh, it really set me up for success when I went to other states and, and played in what they thought was uh, bad conditions. Um, and if there was a course around home, I would say Lick Creek. I grew up playing Lick Creek Golf Course in Pekin, and uh, whether it was super nice out or, or tough conditions, that place was it was tough, and it, and it definitely made me better. Yeah, I think I remember. So I did graduate school as well at at ISU doing sport management and. We did a volunteer portion of that program where I volunteered. I think it was for the state high school tournament. I remember wearing gloves and a hat. I'm like, these guys are going out here trying to shoot their best round. I'd have a tough time doing that. So it might have been one of the years that you uh, played as well um, during that time. Yeah. Um, but you decided through all that, you're like, I want to stay in the same weather conditions and, and keep doing it, which is great. Um Obviously, I want to talk about your, your time at Illinois State University. Had a really nice career there. Two-time MVC Player of the Year, three-time Missouri Valley All-Conference Selection. What did you take away from those college years, and, and what made you decide to uh, go to ISU? What made it appealing? I know they, I think right probably when you were coming into school, they were putting in that new driving range. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to use that but it was just for the golf team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you were able to use uh, that, that great facility as well. But why did, was ISU the choice for you, and, and what did you take most away from your, your time at, in college? Um, 
I issue when it comes to a recruiting standpoint, I wasn't very heavily recruited. You know, I, I only had a few options and uh, a lot of them were close to home. So uh, it came down to basically ISU or Bradley and uh, the rivals. So the, the, Yeah, the rivals. Yeah, so I, I definitely made the right choice, uh, even though growing up in the Peoria area. Uh, but I chose yeah. ISU just because I, I love the facilities, the new, the new range. Uh, a lot of the other sports were, you know, basketball and football were booming right before I came in. And uh, on top of that, my dad was an ISU alum as well. So I think I kind of had that... Uh, cool not pressure, but, uh, he definitely probably wanted me to go there. Um, and when I got there, you know, what I took away was, you know, you don't have to go to a big time division one school. Uh, you know, you can go to a mid-major like ISU and if you just put the work in, you can compete with anybody. Yeah. I think that's the great thing about golf is really any, any type of body size can play and perform well to their highest level. As long as you put in the work, um, and you see so many guys on the tour now that are coming from schools like, I think, uh, like Kent State, you got guys, I know Dawson Armstrong that we've had on the show before. He went to Lipscomb. Mm-hmm. He's on the Corn Ferry Tour. So it really, like you said, doesn't really matter where you go. If you put in the work, and I think also, you know, you need some dominoes to fall your way yeah. and, and have the right opportunities. But there's there's always a chance to to make it out there. I got to ask you, what's your favorite Illinois State uh, memory? It doesn't have to be golf related, but, you know, ISU was so good to me. I'm sure it was good to you. So I'm intrigued to hear uh, what it might be. Yeah, you know, uh, it's so hard. Sunday I mean, fun day at the pub? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. When I think about back school, it sounds sad, but uh, I just, I think more about, the team and and golf and my five years on that, that golf team and just constantly Mm -hmm. on the road. Um, I don't think I have any moment that really stands out, but I think all the combined, you know, flying and driving and just always in the van and just the stuff that goes on in the van that (laughs) whether Mm -hmm. we shot three Oh five or two seventy, you know, it was, we always had a blast and, I just think those are memories that I'll, I'll carry on uh, for the rest of my life. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a pretty relative trend from other guys that I've interviewed when they talk about making the transition or the jump from college to pro is you kind of have that built in su- support system with the team and everything going on. Did you find that to be kind of something of a struggle to deal with in your early like pro transition so far or um, are you getting used to kind of flying solo in a sense compared to being on a team in college? Yeah, I, I think there's there's definitely um, that that factor of, of turning pro. Uh, I think I'm I've always been the person that I'm okay with uh, kind of being on my own a little bit and doing my own thing. But you know that's not always the best thing to be around a, a group of guys when it comes to not only just golf or going to the gym. Uh, hanging out it's it's just really healthy overall Uh, so I haven't had too much trouble but it's definitely different you know not having Mm -hmm. eight other guys that you can go to whether it's uh, you need help with your golf game you just want to go play um, you need life advice anything like that you know it's it's just different you know I'm my own boss right now so I I set the schedule I decide Mm -hmm. when I practice uh which has pros and cons, but, um, it's, it hasn't been too bad of an adjustment phase for me, but, um, some people I can see would have a lot of issues with that. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Glad you're, and, and you're talking about, you know, being your pretty much your own manager, your own coach Yeah. and there's, and golf is a, a heavy mental game. And I think even more recently, a lot of people talking about the mental side of golf and, and how you're dealing with it. And I think it's great that you're able to study uh, sports psychology at ISU. So I'm interested to hear kind of how do you approach your mental game? How do you approach each round mentally? And how do you handle maybe things that um, go your way or maybe don't go your way on the course? And and how do you react? Yeah, that obviously has a lot to do with uh, how I've kind of grown in that uh, Mm -hmm. part of the game. It's it has to be the most important part of. I would say any sport. Um, some sports are more reactive. Golf's kind of a little slower paced. You know, you have time in between shots. But um, 
yeah, there was things from the classroom and, and techniques or, or things to go out about doing things in between shots that I would take onto the course. But uh, I think a big thing for me is, is perspective. And I got to kind of shout out uh, Coach Kralis, uh, who's still coaching, and uh, B.A. Wybring, who was a, one of our big-time alums. Just, you know, whether it's about a result or just kind of how you play, you got to have perspective on the big picture. And, and also, you know, things could always be worse. You know, I'm out, I'm out playing golf at ISU, you know, on a scholarship and and going to school and, and meeting new people. You know, I, not everyone gets to do that. So um, I would always, whether it's a rough day, rough day of practice, uh, one bad shot, I would always kind of think big picture and think back to goals that I would set each year and just kind of think this is just a little, you know, something getting in my way and I just got to work my way past it. So that, that was mm-hmm. a big, a big part of it perspective. And just, uh, the other thing too, is just thinking a little deeper, but you know, my bad round, I, you know, you hear a lot of the guys on TV, they get to go home, uh, like Ron was saying to their family, their kids, I'm not at that level yet, but I still have a wife. I can get to go home to our animals and my family. So, uh, that's a big part of it. Yeah. And and you mentioned DA. Um, I'm interested to hear. Did you try to connect with him before making the jump to the pro? Did he have any suggestions or tips for you? I know, obviously, generational difference, but I'm sure his wisdom would would help you a little bit. Yeah, uh, DA and I have a pretty good relationship. Uh, he's a busy man, as as you could assume, uh, mm-hmm. but we we try to communicate every so often. But you know, there wasn't anything different than what he's told me. You know, just he, I met him my freshman year in, in Dallas and he liked what I had. And he just, he said, just play your game. You know, I'm, I'm, my game is not to, to bomb it. You know, I'm, I'm going to hit a lot of fairways and then just play very uh, consistent golf. And he's like, just stick to that. And, and you got enough to, in the tank to, to do it. So he just said, you know, don't treat it any different and just trust your, trust your game and, and trust your plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you touched on a little bit of of kind of how you approach the game. Obviously, taking accuracy into effect there, and just kind of staying within yourself. When you're going to a different course, you play some practice rounds. How do you kind of strategize, or how do you kind of work with your caddy to assess different holes or or situations that you're in? Or how do you go into each week from a strategy standpoint when when you're in your preparation stage? Yeah, uh, you know, that's a part of, of the transition from college to pro that has definitely not changed a whole lot. But, you know, now I'm seeing all new courses again, where in college you basically play a similar schedule. And um, you, uh, I got to play courses, you know, four or five years in a row. Um, so I wouldn't have to relearn all these courses and things like that. But I, I'm a guy, like I said, I don't bomb it, uh, but I do hit typically a lot of fairways, a lot of greens, and it just comes down to making putts. So my, you know, strategy most weeks is to push it off the tee as much as I can and get it up there. And uh, if I can get any type of short iron in my hand, I, I, I trust myself there. And uh, hitting greens is huge, and obviously making putts is even, even better. So that's kind of – I don't try to overthink overthink things. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I try and get myself ready mentally and just kind of, you know what, go out there, compete, and see if I got what it takes. Love that. And um, when when you're going week to week, I know you've probably played um, some Monday qualifiers too. And I'm always interested to hear from a caddy standpoint, do you have someone that, that you try to have on the bag on a regular basis? Or are you normally um, trying to get friends on the bag that, that kind of know your game, but also know you from a personal side to keep you you know, level headed or calm on the course or, or your, or your mind off some certain things. Um, how do you go about, you know, putting somebody on the bag on a weekly basis? Yeah. You know, I haven't, uh, quite had to, or had that much experience yet with, you know, doing, choosing a caddy and then whether you go with like a professional mm-hmm. caddy or a buddy, um, mm-hmm. the few times that I've, what would you like to do maybe? <laughs> I, if I was in that spot, like I've had my buddy, uh, Will Troy, yeah. uh, my best man yeah. at my wedding, Tyler Shepard, he's caddy for me. Um, but yeah, I, I went with more of a buddy. I think it made me a little more comfortable out there. 
made it less business related, you know, um, Mm -hmm. either way I'm going out there to try and shoot the lowest score I can shoot. And if I can have someone I know on the bag that also knows my golf game, like Will and they did, uh, I think it just helps me kind of ease into the rounds and makes it more, uh, more of a comfortable week for me. And, you know, in between shots, it, it keeps it lighter and we have conversation and, and it's overall just a, a good memory to have with, with, you know, your friends or your buddy. For sure. Yeah. I think it, there seems to be a trend even recently with guys that even have been on tour for a long time. Like Stuart Sink has a son on the bag now. Um, some other people have just kind of someone that makes them feel good out there, which I think is important. That's kind of like going back to the mental side of it is if you're feeling better or know how to handle yourself mentally, it ends up uh, paying off in the end from a, scoring standpoint so i think i would go with the same if i you know ever needed a caddy for anything i don't think i'm gonna need a caddy for scrambles anytime soon but uh i'd probably go with the same route and you did have a a couple exemptions and you got one into uh the john deere classic so pj tour biggest stage of kind of the the golfing world um what did you take away from that that week Uh, yeah. So what did you take away from that John Deere classic week and, uh, what, what made it special? Like, just, just take us through that. Yeah. The deer, I took a lot from that week. Uh, it was definitely a week that flew by. Uh, I found out, um, probably a month and a half before the event that I got in on a sponsor and, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just hearing that phone call first off was just huge. You know, you dream of, um, you know, playing on a P- in a PGA Tour event or getting your getting your tour card, and that was kind of a dream come true in the first step in the process. And uh, you know, to, to go up there a little earlier than most guys, I got to see that course before you know every everyone got there, and um, I played it before, so it was nice to play it in the calm. And then you know, when Tuesday hits, the storm, everyone mm-hmm, everyone gets there. Mm-hmm. You know, the trucks, it's <laughs> it's insane. You know, those guys do that week in and week out, and it's something that I. I really want to do, and I know I can do it. I just got to get there. Um, but yeah, it was, it's insane how these guys are treated week in and week out, you know, meals, uh, course condition, um, just everything, you know, wh- whatever they need, they're going to get. And, um, but that's part of playing at the, the highest level you can in the sport. So, um, got to play with some people, uh, you know, it's ever or ball, you know, when it comes to comparing myself to, to those guys, it's, it, there's no wow factor, you know, there's the guys that, yes, there's a few that just absolutely strike the ball and that's just, they're like the ROMs and, you know, the top players in the world. But outside of that, I mean, it's, it's, you just golf in your ball, you know, everyone's going to find a way to get mm-hmm. it in the hole. And, and sometimes it looks really good. And sometimes it looks like it's very average. So, You know, everyone's Mm -hmm. just really good at what they do. And that's been the biggest adjustment from college to pro is, you know, um, it's just like anybody can win any given week. We're in college. It's like, I'm not saying it isn't that way, but it's definitely, there's, there's a percentage of the field that just isn't as good as what it is at this level. So uh, that was a big week. I, I took a lot from that. It was a good experience. It sucked not to make the weekend, but. Uh, it really made me want to get back on on that tour or just play, you know, more on that tour. And I think getting into the Corn Ferries uh, this summer were huge and felt a lot more comfortable with those because of my experience at the deer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've I've talked about it with some other guys. The the margins are just razor thin with with you guys all trying to make it to the PGA Tour, and even the a thousand best golfer on the planet is so far away, but he just needs one break. It's like Max Homa. I think he, he almost didn't even get his PGA tour card. He made a putt to get through corn Ferry two finals. Now he's one of the top guys on the PGA tour. So it just takes really just takes one week to, to, you know, change, change something on the tour. Um, but there's so many guys that are so good, uh, nowadays, um, out there with the, with those guys, you said, you know, everyone's just so good. Everyone's so consistent. Are there a couple of factors that I would say separates 
those top tier players? Is it like limiting three putts, no big numbers, mental game? What do you think is kind of maybe a few things that, that make you guys the top um, golfers in the world? Um, yeah, I mean, there's just, for example, you know, you see the guys that are winning every week to, or that, that win in a week, not every week. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. they're typically not making doubles, doubles or killers. Uh, bogeys suck, but you can, you can replace a bogey with a birdie doubles kill you. Three putts are not good. Um, Mm -hmm. so those things can always try and be eliminated, especially if you're trying to win. Um, but it really comes down to confidence and belief in what you're doing. And the biggest thing that separates, you know, the really good players from the best is it's got to be short game and putting. I mean, at mm-hmm. the deer, I play, the guys I played with, uh, one, one, of his, uh, one of them was uh, Rob Oppenheim, and uh, he's currently injured right now, but he's been on the tour, and he's, he's been playing, he's in his 40s, been playing for 20 years. He's been in between the Corn Ferry and PGA, but it, it kind of similar to my game. Didn't hit it very far, but it didn't matter if he missed the green, whatever the lie was, he got it up and down, you know. These top players mm-hmm. in the world, they're they're getting everything up and down, and they're making a lot of putts inside ten feet. And then when they're hitting everything else well, then watch out. You know, it's just kind of one of those. So everyone is very good, but if you can find a way to keep big numbers off, and you're really making putts inside ten feet, you got a chance to win it at any level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I find find that for myself as well. Just in the amateur game, if I'm making putts, I'm scoring well. So hopefully. Yeah. I can I can somewhat feel feel that as well from my side, but not as close to to what you guys are doing out there. Um, so you you briefly mentioned you know having a little bit more confidence once you did uh, get into the NV five invite in Glenview, and that's when we first connected out there. And I was excited to to watch a Redbird in a pro event. Um, so you got in on the Monday qualifier. That's got to give you a lot of confidence going into that week. And I, I know you've played some other Mon- Monday qualifiers as well. Uh, I think I asked Patrick Flavin, the Iron Man of, of Iron Qualifiers mm-hmm. uh, last year, about just kind of that atmosphere and what it takes to really get through and propel yourself through on a Monday. I'd love to hear your thoughts on just the general scope of Monday qualifiers and, and what it takes to to get one of those low scores to, to push through. Yeah, Monday qualifiers are the most unique thing in in golf, honestly. It's mm-hmm. it's they're so tough and um I you know, I don't know what Patrick said, but honestly or obviously he's like you said, the Iron Man of Monday qualifying. I think he <laughs> yeah. it was like yeah. five or six times. He figured out the formula. Yeah. And and for yeah. him, you know, um uh, once you get into one, it kind of opens up the doors. You know, it's not all the chances are so low at qualifying, but once you do it once, just that belief factor goes up and not only your game, but just like, Hey, I can tee it up and shoot 64 or 65 any day. You know, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, at, at the club one day or you're literally in a Monday queue. So, uh, it's just a different mindset, you know, uh, like I was playing golf with someone today and they're like, it's all gas, you know, no breaks. It's, that's mm-hmm, kind of the mm-hmm. mindset. You got to take some chances, but you can't be stupid. You know, you got to play aggressive, try and hit as many greens as you can. You just want as many birdie putts as you can. And, and uh, you know, for me, in my experience, I've only gotten through, you know, one, and that was for MV5. But for me, it's just like there's no expectation because you know what you mm-hmm. have to do. You know you got to go shoot six, seven, eight, nine, ten under just to go play and get into an event. So it, mm-hmm. it's really easy to beat yourself up if you're doing them week in and week out, because you can go out and shoot five under every Monday queue and you might not qualify all year. And 67 mm-hmm. is pretty good. <laughs> so yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, it's definitely more of a mental test than physical. So, uh, but you got to do them if you want to try and get on, on, on tour or try and get uh, some status that kind of way instead of waiting on queue school. So they're tough, but uh, they're, they're worth doing and they can definitely make you better. Yeah, and, and you played really well um, that week on the Corn Ferry Tour, so that was great to see and had a little bit of support there. I think your wife and 
um, some other folks from ISU were, were out there. But then also when you got to play in Springfield, I'm, I'm sure you had some uh, ISU constituents down there. What was that like to have? I'm sure you had some support at the Deer as well. But what was it like? And what is it like to have those folks around you and kind of share the journey with you in a sense? Um, I'm sure they're excited when, when they get to see you play out there. And th- I'm sure, does it add any pressure to you when you know, you know, people are watching, supporting you when, when you go out there for a round? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty grateful for the support I've had. Um, when I got into the deer, I had uh, that Thursday, I still remember I teed off at like just before two, I think it was like second to last time. And uh, I, I had to have at least a hundred people watching that's and, awesome. Uh, I remember one of the people working, they uh, they went up to Claire Peterson, who uh, is now not working for the deer anymore, but he was who gave me the exemption. And he's like, who's this, who's this David Perkins kid? He's got like the second biggest gallery <laughs> I've seen all day. And uh, so mm-hmm. it was pretty cool. Someone said that we had the second biggest gallery behind Zach Johnson. So there That's had to awesome. be at least a, a few or, you know, a couple hundred people out there. Um it, for me, it helped me kind of settle in, even though people might think it might make me even more nervous. But just knowing that I had that many people behind me and know what I want to do in life and, and they're, you know, standing there wanting to experience that with me. And not only that, they believe in me. It meant a lot to me, uh, whether that was family or just random classmates from school. Um, yeah, it, it was really cool. And then to see that transition in MV5 where it was a little colder that week. Uh, there's still some people getting out there and and, uh, and watching. I, I love when people come out and follow. It just kind of it makes me more comfortable and, it, and it, it makes it more fun if you make a putt or make a birdie or something. You know, you get some applause and and uh, so it helps with that. And then in Springfield, I got kind of the same same thing. Didn't quite play as well, but uh, people toughed it out through the heat and through the rain, and, and it meant a lot to me. So yeah, that's a that's been a big part of 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 my journey when I've been able to get in these events and it, and it really is, is just so cool uh, to play in front of the uh, people like that and, and people from back home. Yeah. I, th- I think I, I, it would be great to, to have some people follow you around. I've, and that kind of uh, brings me to the next point is, is about the Illinois open. I've always, I've always thought about getting into a qualifier. I'm like a 10 handicap, so I need to lower it down a little bit and shoot in the seventies, at least to show some, some respectable game out there. Uh, but I'm hoping to maybe do that in the next year or two. And I always would think about, you know, people following me around and it's got to feel pretty cool to, to have that support out there playing in a, a big event, but you ended up winning the, the Illinois open, um, which is a, a great feat at uh, white Eagle. And my, my uncle's actually a member out at white, white Eagle. So I've played out there. It's tough. Yeah, it <laughs> and, uh, they, I think it was, I, uh, they had some corn fairy tour qualifying and I saw Theo uh, Humphrey out there. Who's a corn fairy tour guy. And they were shaved the greens down and, I, I can't tell you how many three putts I had with, with how fast they had the greens. Uh, but what was it like to to win the Illinois Open? And what kind of confidence does that give you uh, getting a win like that? You know, Patrick Flavin's won it too. Some some other guys, Vince India, who aren't pros on the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, so definitely guys that, that know what they're doing. So I, I definitely will see, will see you out in the Corn Ferry Tour. But what was that? Um, like for your confidence to get that, you know, early in your transition to your, your pro career? Yeah, it, it was, uh, obviously it was pretty cool, uh, to get my uh, first, uh, professional win on home turf. Uh, I think that made it even mm-hmm. more special, but, uh, in my mind it was, you know, when I first turned pro, like we talked about, there's the transition, uh, the golf and scores were, uh, better and, and the courses were different and, I didn't quite see the results that I wanted to see right away, but I was also playing a lot of Monday cues. And like we talked about, it's mentally just draining. Um, mm-hmm. So from taking that and just continuing to put in work and, and see some good rounds of practice and, then you know, got into MV or played the deer, took that experience, got an MV five through the Monday qualifier way, got another sponsor, gained more experience. I think that all was just a, you know, adding up from all those events put together and just the experience and knowing that if I can play at that level, why can't I go out and win the Illinois Open? 
you know, I, I almost won it as an amateur in, I can't, I think it was 18 or 19. Uh, I lost events. Um, and mm-hmm. then I finished like ninth, I think, uh, the year before this past year. And so I'd always kind of been around contention. I'd, I'd seen who's won it. I'd played with who's won it. Um, and I always feel comfortable teeing it up in Illinois anywhere. So I knew mm-hmm. if I just went out, kept my head down, and uh, just trusting what I was doing, I had enough game to, to take that trophy. Uh, but And I think that setup was great, though. Like you said, White Eagle's tough. Uh, Brad for mm-hmm. the IPGA put some pins that were just insane. So uh, I like tough golf. I know what it does to the field. I know mentally it can just take people out of tournaments. So, like I said, I just kind of kept giving myself chances and and took my experience from these big events and and put myself, you know, from what I learned there in the Illinois Open and just kind of leaned on that and said, you know, I got what it takes to do this. Let's finish it off and battled through some nerves and a rain delay to, to finish it out. Yeah, I got to think rain delays, especially when you're close to lead or in the lead, has got to be tough because – uh, especially if you're in a groove, is it is it hard to get kind of that momentum back if if you do have a delay of some sort, whether it be the darkness overnight or uh, a rain delay when you're kind of in the groove on the course? Yeah, I in that scenario, that rain delay was a blessing, I think. Um, okay. But not always. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get in a groove. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, you know, wow, I got to go sleep on this or uh, whatever. But in that moment, you know, anytime you get in contention. I don't care who you are. Someone you got either adrenaline or nerves or a mix of both, you know, even the top players in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but those experiences, like I talked about being in contention and, 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 and college and then playing in these big events, you take that and you, you figure out how you feel in those moments and, you know, the heart rates up, you know, everything's just different and you got to not, not just calm yourself down, but just embrace it. You know, you know what's going on, you know, you got a chance to win and you know, you got, a chance to win it in front of family and friends, you know, that that's, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So that rain delay was huge though, because I was in the worst spot on <laughs> 17 and it started pouring down rain and, and thank God they blew the horn. And when I came back out, it made this short sided pitch. It was still tough, but the, the rain definitely softened that, that area up. So I was able to get that away with good. it and <laughs> made a birdie and that kind of sealed yeah. it for me. But yeah, it's, it's, it can be tough. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, speaking of the Illinois Open, uh, Will said the only reason you won is because he waxed you in the practice round. Is is there any truth to oh, that? Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, that is true. And he's got my number in practice rounds. I don't know why. I, I think, uh, yeah, I drove up. We played the, the night before, and he shot like 66 that night before and he I shot like 71 or <laughs> yeah. two, I think. And he got me pretty good. That's funny. He told you that. Of course he did. Yeah. 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 But the, the only rounds that matter are when the lights are on. Yeah. Per se. yeah. So, uh, you got the better yeah. of them there. That's funny. And, and obviously, and, uh, you know, I obviously saw you, we talked a little bit about caddies and, and the MV5. He, Will was obviously your caddy, um, for the MV5 invite, he he believes he's the best uh, looper you have on the bag with your scoring average. And um, I, do you plan to have him on the bag any anytime soon? He's definitely uh, – we definitely have something going between us two. Uh, good vibes. Yeah, it's, it's good. Um, I don't know. He just kind of – he knows my game well, and he, he knows when he should talk to me and when he should when I'm pissed off. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, mm-hmm. scoring, scoring average wise, it's been good. And, and, uh, it's always fun to have him on the bag. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, to close us off here, I would love to, to hear from you. I know you've been down in Florida for a bit, um, grinding away, but what does, uh, what does 2023 look like for David Perkins? Uh, you talked a little bit about Monday qualifiers or are you, uh, doing any mini tours down there what are you hoping to accomplish this year there's so much uh you know you, you have yeah yeah there's so many <laughs> sure. rides and, and goals and um you know it's going to be a mix to keep it short it's going to be a mix of, of monday qualifying uh playing some mini tours uh while i finish out my time down here there's a tour called the minor league tour 
Uh, and then in the summer, it'd probably be all pro tour. It's another mini tour. It's good. Uh, but hopefully not playing those things, you know, hopefully get into a Monday and, and catch some fire. Uh, I got yeah. Monday qualifier uh, on this Monday for Puerto Rico open for the tour. Uh, so cool. hopefully that goes well. The game's really good right now, but um, yeah, it's going to be a mix of Mondays, minis, and, and, uh, and just waiting for Q school for corn Ferry, And then, and then maybe I guess I'm doing uh, Canada Q school in, in about a month. So we'll maybe get out there this summer and experience yeah. that. And that's another path to get to the corn Ferry. So, there's so many, there's so many ways of doing it. And there's so many mm-hmm. things that could happen this summer, you know, like, like Patrick's case, you know, he Monday and he went from nothing to, you know, almost a tour card in a year. So, you know, anything yeah. can happen. And I'd love to, you know, experience kind of that, that, that path of doing things. And, and uh, hopefully the Mondays can be good to me this year. Yeah, I, I hope so as well. And I've, I've never really, I don't know. I'm not too close with the mini tour, but I know it's a it's a grind. How would you explain uh, the mini tours in the golf golf sense for maybe folks that that don't really know that side? I think a lot of people see what happens on TV in the PGA Tour, but I know there's some great stories from from the mini tour life and guys that have grinded on those for a while. Um, obviously, you're early in your career, but what would be a quick synopsis of of mini tours uh that are out there yeah they're all different <laughs> some are better than <laughs> <Yeah>. other, others <laughs> never know no. what you're gonna get <laughs> uh you know it, it's hard to just make a profit um really it's just mm-hmm. a way of testing your, your game in a competitive uh sense um it's it's just gambling <laughs> you put in money and it mm-hmm. goes in a pot and whoever plays the best gets it you know there's skin games there's there's all kinds of things uh, but you got to play, you know, if you don't play, you're never going to gain that competitive experience. And it's, it's going to kill me when I try to get in at Mondays and, and I hadn't been playing, you know, and now I got to try and go shoot eight under. So, um, yeah, minis are a grind. They're, they're tough. They're, they're really tough on your motivation because you can't gain status out of them. Uh, but they're essential to kind of your path to getting you to where you want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always intrigued. I know uh, Monday Qualifier Twitter, I think his name's Ryan as well, out of Chicago. He's always talking about uh, mini tours and, and Monday Qualifiers, and he's told some of those stories in the past as well. Um, well, cool. Well, David, really appreciate your time. Uh, really fun to, to speak with a fellow Redbird. I'm wishing you all the best uh, coming up here soon. We'll keep an eye on that, that Puerto Rico Open qualifier and root you on from afar so all those hundreds of people that were following you outside the ropes they're following you online so just remember that we're, yeah, we're with no, you thank you uh, for having me on the podcast today. it's good yeah and i hope we uh we cross paths again and hopefully this summer and, and glenn yeah maybe again. all right well i appreciate it thanks yep. again go birds go birds